Gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Newton South High School, home of the Lions. And today, it is the MIAA South Sectional Quarterfinals. Your Brockton Boxers defeating Durfee handily by 20 points on Tuesday night to earn their right here against the top-seeded Lions. Newton South coming in at 19-1. 
and they have gone on quite a run this season. Per the usual, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside the not so newly named athletic director of Brockton High School, Kevin Cairo. We are on the road. It's tournament time. There's not much better than this. We don't know what's happening two days from now. We do know that Brockton has made a change to the starting lineup, Nelani Montero on the bench, and Rebecca Tannis is in the starting five. Newton South in their home white uniforms with orange trim around the blue numbers. Brockton in the very slick looking black jerseys, red trim around the white numbers. The rest of the starting five for Brockton, Jayla Smith, Elizabeth Williams, Jade Wint and Anna Alicia Fernandez joining Tannis on the floor. For the Tigers, it's number five, Maria Oliveri. Number 22, Veronica Burton. And Burton's with it now. Burton over to number 32, that's Paige Oliveri. And stepping out of bounds was Maria Oliveri. And they're joined alongside Frankie Silva. And Alicia Fernandez, the star guard and center for the boxers, turns it over. It is right into the arms of Burton, who is fouled from behind from Tannis. And she'll be at the line for a couple of shots. Veronica Burton, the senior guard. At the line, missing our first attempt. We are scoreless a minute into this first half. One of two, so Newton South on the board first. Annalicia Fernandez driving, kicks it out to Williams. Thought about the three, back inside for Williams, taken by Burton, who already has a couple of steals to her name. Marka Burton. Down to the corner, and now a long three taken by number 24, and it's good, Frankie Silva, sophomore guard. And Newton South up 4-0. Tannis with the top of the key, over to Annalicia Fernandez, back to Williams. Elizabeth Williams finding a lane, trying to get it back to Tannis, and she is fouled by Paige Oliveri, the senior guard. A very big gym here at Newton South, not something the boxers are used to playing in. Very long, there's a full basketball court on either side of the main court. Jade went quick three, too long. And it is brought down by Silva. Silva off to Burton. Three, this one no good. Fernandez uncontested rebound. Six minutes to go. Brockton yet to get on the board. Fernandez losing it, regaining her composure. And she is fouled by number five, Maria Oliveira. Called for the reach. So the Lions coming in 19 and 1. That's good for a 9-5-0 win percentage. Veronica Burton, if that last name sounds familiar, well it should. If any of you out there are Patriots fans, she is the youngest daughter of Steve Burton of Channel 4 WBZ News Sports Reporter. Got a scholarship offer to UConn as this is an and one for Burton. So Burton got a full scholarship offer to UConn, the most dominant collegiate program in the history of ever. Gino Ariyama, it's like eight of the last 10 national titles or something ridiculous like that. She turns them down. Going to Northwestern. And she has been the MVP for the Lions thus far. Hey, Matt. Mr. Caro, timeout called by Brockton. Yeah, good 5.21 to, be, good to, be to go yeah. in the first. It's 7-0. 
Lions on top of the boxers. We were just talking about Veronica Burton. Do you recognize the name? Um, I'm going to say relation to Ron Burton Jr. Steve Burton. Steve Burton, okay. So WBZ. Okay. Got a full scholarship offer to UConn to play basketball okay. for Gino Ariyama. They've won eight of the last ten titles or something ridiculous mm -hmm. like that. Turns them down. Going to Northwestern because they have a better yep. sports reporting program. I was going to say academically for that major, sure. I can see that. Well, good for her. I mean, it's good that she has options and kind of can pick and choose. And it's great that um, a game of basketball can take her off to college. And she has six of the seven points for the Tigers so far. Yeah, and I've just seen just that early on, it, it seems as though the boxers are playing a little timid. Um, they're getting out hustle under the offensive board. So hopefully Coach Conley just told them to calm down, have fun, and just play play their game. Melani Montero into the game now, replacing that's, Tannis. That's just nerves. Burton all the way in, lays it off the glass and in. And comes up with a steal off the inbounds from Liz Williams. Veronica Burton tearing up the boxers. Reverse layup, this one no good. And Williams comes down with it for the boxers off to Nelani Montero. Uh, travel. And she's called for the travel. Yeah, just a lot of nerves. I mean, we've got a freshman in there, we've got a sophomore in there. That really didn't play all that much tournament last year, so. But yeah, coming down from 9-0 on the road is no easy task. That's only a couple of three-pointers for Annalie Lorenzo, who is on the floor for her first minutes of tonight's game. Burton off to Frankie Silva, back to Burton, getting double-teamed, and now Silva for three comes up short. And Alicia Fernandez with her third rebound of the game. To the corner, mm. a dangerous pass. Talking about the dimensions of the court here, it's kind of funky. Yeah, I mean, this line's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the equivalent of four basketball courts in this gym. If you could see the floor, the orange lines are what would amount to be vertical courts. The black lines are the ones we're paying attention to tonight. As Fernandez knocks it out of bounds. And then there's rubber courts on the end. Yeah. And some schools are so privileged that the first gym we tried to go into tonight, they said, nope, next window down, <laughs> this is the wrong basketball court. They uh -huh. have two gyms. Yeah, I was down at Taunton High School today and they have that same problem. Two gyms and the, the field house down at Taunton is just, oh my God, spectacular. Oh, bombs away. Lorenzo right. three is good. And Brockton is on the board. 11 to three, just north of halfway through this first quarter. Another three for the Lions is good. That one courtesy of Paige Oliveri. And Brockton might have to start slinging early. Yep, there goes Jade. Wins three short. And now it's Veronica Burton. Three, no good, and gasps from the crowd as that one went around the world and uh -uh. out. Speaking of Taunton, the winner of this game moves on to the neutral site at Taunton High School. Yep. It's just, it looks like they just got a really good zone going here. Lorenzo, three is good, and she's responsible for all six of the boxers' points now with three minutes to go in the first quarter. Good ball movement for the Lions. The ball has not touched the floor until Veronica Burton just dribbled it a few times. Out to Burton, top of the key. 10 on the shot line. clock, a long three, no good. Lorenzo coming up with the rebound. And she slows up the boxers offense, giving it back to Annalisa Fernandez. It's Brockton coming in with a lot of momentum. They defeated the big three divisional rival Durfee Hilltoppers 58 to 38 the other night to earn their way here. Burton coming up with another steal. She's in alone off the glass, no mistake. Yeah, 
And so the question becomes, if you're the boxers and Coach Chris Connolly, what are you doing to corral the senior guard, Veronica Burton? Oh, they're probably going to, I mean, but this is this is the thing. I, um, Newton South, I think they are very talented all the way around. They can't go box on one because then you'll end up leaving somebody open inevitably. So they're just going to have to play good defense and find somebody that can slow her down a little bit. But it has to be mistake free from this point on for the boxers because they're chasing 10. They've had a couple of careless passes, so they have to button some stuff up. Speaking of mistake free, this is nearing the end of what could be a brutal week for the Brockton High Athletics Department. Tuesday night, we had first the girls game at Staff Gymnasium mm -hmm. and then off to the Canton Ice House. Beautiful facility. Oh, yeah, place is awesome. Ridiculous. Oh, it's fantastic out there. Two rinks. Yep, we got a rest of floors. A restaurant up top. Ridiculous. Falling six to two to the Framingham Flyers with the Boxers hockey team. And last night we saw the Boxers men's basketball team completely dominate the Blue Bombardiers. Second half. Second half. They were only up by four at halftime, 36-32. Mm -hmm. And they came away 71-48, I think. 71-48. So they play tomorrow night. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> depending on our, our good maybe. friend, Mother Nature. Yeah. Because Quincy doesn't have school. I, had, uh, I just got off the phone with the athletic director from Quincy. And they do not have school tomorrow. Travel called on Paige Oliveri. And the, and the weather is just, I mean, it's rain, I get it, but when it's blowing 50 or 60 miles an hour, that's when you have to be concerned with down trees and power lines, and you've got you know, people coming from all over the city to get to the game. So I'm really not sure if we're going to play tomorrow, and uh, if we do have to reschedule, it would be on Saturday. Montero loses the pass out of play. And the Lions take over. I'm supposed to go visit Mom after tomorrow night's game if it happens. And she said, it's supposed to absolutely pour. And I said, I know, I'll bring the canoe. Yeah. And oh, she it. said, forget the canoe, you're going to need an arc. Yeah. Uh, they said two and a half to three inches of rain, and they just said heavy, heavy rain. It's supposed to turn to snow at some point. Yeah, they said that you're going to get a cold blast, and we could pick up four to six inches. First thing Saturday Giddy morning. up. Nothing says New England like a little uh, flash breeze as Williams called for the travel. And that's just the little mistakes that add up pretty quick. So Brockton, the men's team fell to 17-3. and three, Dropping to a third seed. Which probably was the best thing to happen to them. They're on the opposite side which is very good of the bracket for Mansfield. Yeah, and it's Mansfield and who? Needham. Mansfield Needham. Speaking of Metro West, we won't have to run into any of them until the South Sectional Final. Ball movement, the key for the Lions, and now a three is no good. Crashing the paint and out of bounds off of, I believe, Williams or Lorenzo. Both were in on the rebound attempt. Jade went in for Nelani Montero. And Josoma Montron into the game for Brockton as well. So Brockton faces the winner of Needham or New Bedford should they get past Quincy. Love to see New and, Bedford and, and, again. A and a lot of people have said it will be New Bedford. They said that Needham has one good player. And Jade for three, nice. Here's what I say to those people with one second to go. A long three, no good. The buzzer sounds the first half has come to an end. Brockton within 10, 19 to 9. It's not impossible, but a tall task when Veronica Burton is, I would say, the, having the game of her life, but she's had games with 30 or 40 points, so not much you can do to to stop the senior guard. So here's what I have to say to the people who are writing off Needham. 
you don't go 17 and three with one good player. Mm -hmm. If the other four starters are average or slightly above average, you're still. Oh, they're they're a good team. Don't do not get me wrong. Um, you can't write them off. But no, I would definitely not write them off. But I think that New Bedford is playing really well right now. They've got some momentum, and they're a big three team. Come on. Love the big three teams, especially <laughs> when they came in to staff gymnasium earlier on in the season. It was a very competitive matchup until Brockton eventually pulled away. Mm -hmm. First year head coach Brian Rudolph, former star player, tore it up. I think leading New Bedford to the state tournament. Really? At one point. He's now the coach of the Whalers. Lorenzo, three, oh, is good. Right. The third three of the game for Annalie Lorenzo. She's got nine of the boxers, 12 points. Jade Wint with the other three. Brockton has yet to hit anything from within the three-point arc. And this is where they just got to be careful with that back door if they, oh. What a block for Williams. Got a girl. And that's something we saw a lot against Durfee, a ton of blocks. Mm -hmm. This is Burton now kicking it out. Three-pointer is good. That was... And they got to try to run it, and I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Okay, we got a foul. We're shooting two. The line for two is in Alicia Fernandez. That foul called against Maria Oliveri. And no good on her first attempt is Fernandez. Has she made a decision yet? No. Where she's going next year? Nope. Heavily scouted, especially early on in the year. Mm -hmm. Numerous I, colleges. And I think she kind of panicked a little bit when she knew college coaches were there and pressed a little bit. But now I think that she's really kind of relaxed. And Burton, three, no good. Montron with the rebound for Brockton. Montron, three, no good. Went rebound in the paint off the glass and in. And Brockton finally with a two-point field goal. Minute 15 into the second quarter. It's 22-15. Lions on top on the shoulders of Veronica Burton. Ball movement, the name of the game for the Lions. And I think the first turnover, turnover mm -hmm. of the game for the Lions. Yeah. Jayla Smith back in, Montron comes out. Right. Williams to Lorenzo. Oh, she wants to throw it up. She wanted to, from <laughs> just about half court, she wanted to hock that one up. There she comes. Now she takes it, quick oh. release, too long. Jayla Smith, oh. right place at the right time, a little bit too much mustard, Jade Wint. Gets tangled up. Oh. Uh, it was Fernandez. There's three in the missed legs. opportunities in the paint. And that would have cut it to five. A three for the Lions is good. Number 32, Paige Oliveri. And another timeout called, I believe, this one from Newton South. It's 5.50 to go in the second quarter. Newton South back up by 10, 25 to 15 in the MIAA South sectional quarterfinal. Here at the home of the Lions. Be interesting to see if we see Steve Burton tonight. He's here. I just he's saw here? him. Yeah, he's down there. Have to grab him and have him do some sideline reporting for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that the Patriots season is uh, good luck with that one. 
We did bring the wireless mic. It'd be interesting to get a, a Newton South fan's perspective. I see we got the postman up on the upper deck. Postman <laughs> Simmons and yet another delivery to the viewers of Procton. Ringing twice, even on Sundays. I would, I would like to shake Steve Bergen's hand because he had a choice four years ago to send Veronica Burton to a private school. Mm -hmm. And she's enrolled in a public school and has been there all four years. And look, she has an opportunity to go play in college at a Division One school. Imagine and that. And she turned down the greatest women's basketball program of all time. But that's what I think that a, a lot of parents have a notion that private is better. Um, you know, you get out of it what you put into it, and what do we got? Possession arrow. And if you're good, people will find you. Bottom line. As is the case with Annalicia Fernandez. Yep. Burton step back three, nope. no good. That's one thing, we're getting killed on the rebounds. Killed. Another three attempt, no good. Jade Wint coming up with the ball for Brockton. Now Fernandez spinning oh. it. All ball is the call and a jump ball. Brockton will retain possession with 21 on the shot clock. Jade went quick too, no good. Burton with the rebound. Acrobatically tossing it to Amaris Mills. Now Burton top of the key to the corner to Oliveri, her three no good. Lorenzo with the uncontested rebound. A couple of boxers calling for it in the far corner. The ball instead goes to Elizabeth Williams. Lorenzo three, no good. Oliveri three, no good, comes up short. And Alicia Fernandez now charging. Giving it off to Jade, went to Lorenzo. She thought about the long three again. She can hit that shot, we've seen multiple times this year. Jayla Smith driving in. Her floater no good, and Burton comes up with the ball. That was almost a travel. Almost. Instead an air ball. She kept the toes down. Burton to the corner for Frankie Silva. Her three, no good. Yeah, rebound it's just to a Maria. rebound. It's just. Floater for Burton, no good. Williams comes up with the ball this time. Still a 10 point, 10 point edge for the Lions. Went three, looks good, good. and it is. <laughs> Cutting the deficit to eight for the boxers is Jade Wint. She's got two from beyond the arc tonight. Corner three for Oliveri, no good. Get it. And Williams grabs the loose ball. All the way up for Jade Wint with some space, her short jumper, no good. Fernandez grabbing the rebound, counted in one for the senior boxer in Alicia Fernandez. All right, six, we could get it to five. And Elani Montero in for Lorenzo. Questionable move taking out the sharpshooter. Yeah, I just think that she's a little winded. I can see that she's huffing and puffing over there on the sideline. And it's a five point lead now for the Lions. And Annie Alicia, she did beat me in a game of horse yesterday, so hopefully that's a good confidence boost for her later on coming down the stretch. Lorenzo with nine points all from beyond the three-point arc. Jade went second on the team with eight. Barton floater, nope. no good, but foul. Yeah, so I was one and one this week, one and one. Beat Jalen Lee handily at a game of horse, and then Annalise, I couldn't. Couldn't get past 
couldn't Annalisa. get past. No, she killed me with three pointers. Killed me. In the paint, I'm good. Outside, outside the paint. So now I'm, we got to set liability. up. We got to set up her against Jerice. No, um, no, Jerice. Yeah, that would be a good one. Still working on setting up Jerice against his mom, who's the single game three point record holder at Massasoit. Oh, no. really? Runs in the family. And I don't think Jerice has seen a shot that he didn't like to take. Take it off, take it off. He's got a release very similar oh. to Lorenzo. Is that hook shot no good? Williams trying to charge back to play defense. Burton breaking the ankles and hits a three. Fernandez oh, driving really? inside, no call. The ball quickly off to the senior co-captain, Veronica Burton. Now Fernandez coming up with the steal. Oh, nope. Losing. That should be head. a travel. When you slide on your knees, isn't that usually a travel? It's supposed to be a travel. Oh, no. Three no good for Oliver. Get it. Burton gets around, Went takes a three, nope. no good. And Went grabs the rebound. And you know what I've seen in this game, and I've seen it in the boys game for the past two years, I have yet to see a player consistently follow their shot. They just throw it up, they watch it. One of our favorite rants to go on. I, I, for as good as she is, doesn't follow the shot. They expect everything to go in, which I get it, that's great, but only half the shots go in. Burton calls for the travel. We had a player on, I forget who it was, earlier on in the year. And he said, we were always taught, do not run in after the shot. Why? I forget who said that. We're going to have to stick the Mad Dog research team on that. I said, that is absolutely 100% incorrect. No, you but, charge but, in for your rebound But that's the new speed. thing, because they said that if you think that you, you missed a shot, it throws off. What do we got? Jump, Jump ball. ball called. Newton South will take over. I'm still a big fan of follow the shot. Absolutely, 100%, <laughs> it's fundamentals 101. You know where it's going. You know when it leaves your hand, if it's going in or not most of the time. But if you watch the NBA and you watch Ray Allen back in 08, it, it looks so good if you just stand there with your arm in the air yeah. watching the shot go in. Burton across now. All the very top of the key back to Burton. Nine on the shot clock. Newton South running out of time. All the very two. Oh, she's Frankie on the line. Silva and she's out of bounds. Oh, we need a three right here. Just go down, get a three. Cut it back to eight, 15 seconds to go. Shot clock is off. Annalie Lorenzo, probably the right one to take the shot at this point. Yeah, but I mean, we got to push the ball up. There's nine, eight. Do they even realize how much time's left? They're going to run out of time. Williams to the corner for Montron, no. who's blocked. Get it up. Out of time is Tannis. And the buzzer sounds, and we are at the half. It's 30 to 20, the Newton South Lions on top of the Brockton Boxers. We've seen the Boxers claw their way back to as close as five yep. and down by as many as 10. So what do the Boxers have to do to stem the tide of the waves and start to work their way back from well, just 10 Just like down? I talked about earlier, I mean, they can't turn the ball over. They have to make the shot, the makeable shots in the paint. They have to be consistent with those. And just keep pressuring them with the defense. I mean, I think that will, if you're in Newton South and you're playing the last seeded team, there's a little bit of panic, I think. So we'll see what happens when the half comes back in nine minutes and 40 seconds. And uh, I'm off to the concessions there. 30 to 20 <laughs> the score. The top seeded Newton South Lions on top of the Brockton Boxers by 10. We are going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this.
What this place needs is better graduation rates. What this place needs is less childhood obesity. What this place needs is free help with taxes. What this place needs is healthy breakfasts. What this place needs is fitness programs for kids. What this place needs is early readers. What this place needs is mentors for teens. What this place needs is people to join us. What this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. it's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. We're here with Steve Burton, a legend, a legend, host of Patriots fifth quarter, and father of the leading scorer for the Newton South Lions, whom you say has to play better in the second half. Well, first of all, I wouldn't call myself a legend, and, and my daughter is very overrated. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. But uh, so far, it's been a pretty good game, a pretty tight game, 30 to 20. So, uh, yeah, she's got to play a lot better in the second half. All right, I'm so hoping that she does that. We heard rumors all week. She turned down UConn Th to go that, to Northwestern. That is not true. Not true. She did not turn down you. She is going Northwestern, but she did not turn down UConn. All right, so now as a father, we heard she wants to go into sports reporting. That That is true. Uh, she's not sure exactly what she wants to do, but uh, but she's, you know, very involved in sports, uh, and basketball is, is one of her first loves. So um, she enjoys it. And, uh Hopefully uh, they can uh, come out with a better second half than they played in the first half. So you finally get to enjoy a game. It's a pretty long Patriots season that you're obviously very tied up and involved in. Right. You get to sit back as a sports fan tonight. What's it feel like on the other side of the camera? Well, it's <laughs> it feels fun. I, you know, I finally get a chance to relax, you know, and with the Patriots, cover the Patriots. In Boston, there's really no offseason, you know, with all of our sports teams. There's no offseason. And, and, and sports is news, and it's it's fun covering the sports teams here. But it's good to come to high school games and, and support not only my my kid, but all the kids here. You know, you want to see all the kids do well. So here's the question I came up with in the first half. A lot of parents, when they've got a talented child, they send them right off to a private school. Veronica enrolled here at Newton South. What led to that decision from you and keep her enrolled for all four years? Well, she had sisters. She has sisters. Did you know that? I did not. Okay, so we've been very blessed. Uh, her two sisters, one played at Villanova and one played at Lehigh. And so we came here. Uh, we moved here. Bob Lobel used to be uh, at Channel 4, and when Bob Lobel retired, um, I became the, uh, the sports director. And because of that, I had to move closer to Boston. You understand? I used to live in Hopkins, and I moved close to the city, and we picked Newton South um, to come here and, and have my children go here. So, as a dad, you've got a bunch of kids that go on to play sports. You're obviously very in tune with the sports world. What's it like seeing all your kids succeed in, in such a way and getting to kind of sit back, relax, and, and watch them succeed? Well, here's the thing with this. It, it, it's fun watching them succeed, but it's fun watching other kids succeed as well. It's not always about my kids. You know, my dad started a camp for kids, and he wanted to make sure, not only make sure your kids succeed, make sure, try and make sure every kid succeeds. It's not always about your kid. It's about who you can help along the way. And, and that's very important, and that's a message that my dad left me. When you help out others, you're helping out yourself as well. So last question. You mentioned your family very big involved in the community. We were at Stonehill graduation last year, and your mom got an honorary degree. Talk about what that's like and 
why being involved in the community is so important. That was very special to us that day. I'll never forget that day because it brought tears to my mom's eyes and tears to my whole family's eyes. Stonehill has been so good to our, our the Burton family in the Ron Burton Training Village because we sent a lot of kids to Stonehill. Um, it just means a lot to us. You know, when my dad started Ron Burton Training Village, he made sure that we wanted to reach out and help out as many kids as we possibly can. We've been blessed with so much. And my dad loved the city of Boston. And he made sure that his message was, make sure you give back. That's what you want to do. You know, it's not always about receiving. It's not always about taking. It's about giving back and helping somebody else along the way. Steve Burton, thank you. Second half about to get underway. You got it, my friend. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for joining us. You got it. Veronica Burton has been dominating the boxers. Veteran analyst Steve Burton says she's got to play better in the second <laughs> half. She's got the ball now. Step back and passes all the way across over to number 35, Amaris Mills. Now it's Oliveri inside. A little jumper off the glass, no good. Offensive board for the Lions. Almost a travel, not called off the top of the backboard, no good. Rebounds have been the name of the game tonight, and Newton South has been dominating on that front. A three from the corner, no good. Veronica Burton with the rebound, she is fouled. And I don't see how she could play better, Steve. Uh, you know, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. With the ball now is Veronica inbounding it to Oliveri. Her jumper is good. It's Newton South drawing first blood here in the second half. They're up by 12, 32 to 20. Just about a minute into this third quarter. This is Mills to Oliveri. Over to Burton. Wasn't really a jumper, but it worked for number 44, Amari Turner, the sophomore forward. And a timeout called by the boxers coach, Chris Connolly. It's fun watching these teams play. You know, when you look at Newton South, they, they live by the three. But if you live by the three, you can die by the three as well. So, But uh, they've normally had a really good year shooting from the outside. So one thing we were talking about in the first half, a lot of players these days like to watch their shot. They don't drive inside, follow their shot, and scrap for the rebound. We've noticed a little bit both ways. There's been stretches where both teams have really followed their shots, mm -hmm. and sometimes they go full Ray Allen style, arms in the air, wait for it to hit the rim, and when it doesn't fall, well, what do I do now? Well, it, it, it's funny that you bring that up, and, and that's a good observation on your part. Um, part of this coaching staff teaches them, and this was brought by Sam Doner, who uh, used to coach here, who now coaches at Natick High School. But he taught the girls to stay there on their shot. So, in other words, when you extend your arm in the air, you are staying there on your follow-through and making sure that's why these girls are told to stay there. Yeah, they want to follow their shot, but not rush it. Because a lot of times, if, if you stay there, you'll hit it. So not throw the shot up immediately, charge it Exactly. After, but follow through, and then when the ball is about halfway, then charge. Then go get it, right. But make sure your follow through stays there. All the way across. One of the big things we're noticing about this Lions team, ball movement is key. Not a lot of dribbling on the offensive side of the floor. A lot of passing. Yeah, that's what they do, and, and, and they share it because they, they can shoot pretty well, so they're not afraid to, to uh, give up the basketball to the open person. And this is Elizabeth Williams for Brockton. Williams one-handing it over to Jade Wint. Wint with eight points thus far to Fernandez. I think she stepped on the line there. The refs didn't call it, but... and. Uh, turnover for the Lions. It's Maria Oliveri coming up with the ball. Long three, no good. Burton with the rebound. Now it's Oliveri back over to Burton. She takes a three, no good. She went with the rebound, but she turns it right back over to the Lions. 
And fouled on the way up is Amari Turner. This one, Steve, could get scrappy. It's a 14 point lead for the Lions right now. And Brockton's tough. I got to give Brockton a lot of credit. They're coming off a blowout win. Is that correct? 20 o point lead, uh, over win over Durfee. Yeah. Now I got to ask you being involved with the pros, high school sports is special in its own kind of way in New England, and especially Massachusetts between especially football, but you've got basketball, and people just go to high school basketball games to go because they're very entertaining. Right. What's the difference like that you, you see between the pros in high school and the atmosphere in a high school gym in a, a hotly contested playoff matchup is Annalie Lorenzo touched the ball out of play. Well, one of the things you notice is that the, the, here in the high school gym, the, the fans are into it. Now, the pros are a whole different level because it, Boston is such a pro town, a pro city. And But when you come into these high schools, you see the passion from the parents, you see the passion from uh, the students, and it's fun to, to have that school spirit still be alive. Three from the corner for Maria Oliveri is good, and that extends the lead to 18 for the Lions. Williams out to Jayla Smith to Lorenzo. Deep three is good. She's got 12 for the boxers out of 23. Monica Burton now crossing over, giving it off, and a block is going to be called on Lorenzo, who had a pretty violent collision with Frankie Silva. Now, some of these girls, you may not know this, know each other. Because uh, they played on the same AAU program with each other. As far as the, on the opposing team. See a lot of that, especially in the big three division, Durfee, New Bedford, and Brockton. A lot of the players know each other and are familiar with right. playing styles. Right, right. As Fernandez is going to come into the game. So last question before we let you go, go ahead. enjoy the game. Is Gronk playing next year? Uh, <laughs> I believe he is. I, I believe he is. I think uh, I think he does want to pursue the WWE and, uh, and movies, but I think uh, that may be later on in, uh, after his football career is over. I think uh, Brady needs Gronk and Gronk needs Brady, and I think they have a, a good thing together, and I think they both know it. Good pass down low, spinning jump shot is good for Amari Turner. Steve, once again, thank you for joining us. Enjoy the remaining 12 minutes of this game. All the success in the world to your family. Thank you. It's a pleasure watching you throughout Patriot season. Thank you, my friend. And we'll see you on the screen. That sounds great. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for joining us. God bless us. you. 346 to go in the third quarter. It's 40 to 23. And Alicia Fernandez good on her first attempt. And Fernandez, two or two at the line to bring the boxers back within 16. Now Veronica Burton with it. Maria Oliveri to Burton at the top of the key. Down low for Turner. Inside for Oliveri. Back out for number 32, Paige Oliveri. Now Paige to Maria. Maria driving baseline is run into and drawing the block. Maria Oliveri at the line for a couple of shots. It is 40 to 25, 15 point edge for the Lions. Fernandez had some room working against Burton. And instead gives it off to Williams, back to Fernandez. Fernandez getting around Burton, but an offensive foul called on Annalicia Fernandez. 
Desoma Montron in for Jayla Smith. The boxers trying to claw their way in from 16 down now. They've been as close as five in the first half. Veronica Burton, a big part of the Lions' success here tonight. Off to Maria Oliveri, her three blocked handily in. Jade Went coming up with the loose ball. Now Liz Williams giving it off to Annalie Lorenzo. Lorenzo's pass for Went blocked in. Now taken by Burton. Burton driving all the way coast to coast, and the finger roll is good. Lorenzo's three blocked and taken by Maria. Now up for Frankie Silva to Burton. Back to Silva, back to Burton. Burton, long three, no good off the front of the rim. Wint comes up with the ball. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. Brockton down 16. Newton South is on a little bit of a cold spell. Now Williams with it. Gives it off to Fernandez. Fernandez working now against Maria Oliveri. Went short jumper is good. Veronica Burton, number 22, the senior guard for the Lions. Off to Maria Oliveri. Now it's Burton on the far side to Page. Now a three is good for number 32. Paige Oliveri, the senior guard, and Newton South is up by 19. Long three, no good. Brockton, I feel like he's gonna start hawking him up. Veronica Burton over to Paige. Paige fouled on the way in, will be at the line for a couple of shots with the opportunity to give the Lions a 20 point lead. Page no good on her first attempt. Good on her second attempt was Paige. So a 20 point lead for the Lions with under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Liz Williams, uh, thinking Nelani Montero, who is fresh back into the game. Now Fernandez to Montron. She throws up a three, and it's good. Just on the Montron, her first point of the game. 36 seconds to go here in the third quarter. This is Burton. Burton to Page. She traveled, not called. To Murray inside for Turner. Her spin around jumper off the glass and in shot clock off. 15 seconds to go. 19 point lead for the Lions. Williams off the glass. Too much mustard on it. Burton comes away with it. Six seconds to go. In alone is Veronica Burton. Fouled from behind from Jasoma Montron and will be at the line with 2.9 seconds to go in the third quarter. Burton good on her first attempt. I believe the first trip of the night for Veronica Burton to the free throw line. And two of two at the charity stripe is Veronica Burton, almost coming up with a steal. Williams, uh, Fernandez rather, isn't going to hawk up a shot before the buzzer sounds. We are at the end of the third quarter. It's 51 to 30. Newton South up by 21 over the Brockton Boxers in the South sectional semifinal. A quarterfinal, excuse me. The Winner 
as the right to play Bishop Feehan in the semifinals of the MIWSL sectional. So it's 51 to 30. Are they going to adjust it 50 to 30, a 20 point edge for the Lions? Steve Burton getting shout outs from everywhere. People coming out of the woodwork, dropping from the rafters to say hello to the host of Patriots fifth quarter. So it's eight minutes on the clock. Brockton has to come up with Nothing short of a miracle. Okay. Burton over to Page. Finds his way back to Burton. Driving inside, kicks it out. A three is no good. Offensive board. Now tipped by Montero. And it's a two on one. Now Newton South able to get back defensively. Fernandez triple teamed at the charity stripe. Jade Wint takes a three, no good. The rebound goes to Frankie Silva. And pass eventually complete to Amari Turner. Back to Burton as we welcome back into the booth. Kevin Caro, no, no, no. a tough act to follow. I just may take a vow of silence for the <laughs> next seven minutes. You, know, you, you go to, into the stands, you get Steve Burton to come and give you his insights. Now, BC a is kind of a big deal. He Originally he said no to me, and then I told him we had Mike the Postman Simmons on camera, and he said, for Mike the Postman Simmons, <laughs> anything. Oh, but the poor guy, I mean, people are coming up. And, I mean, I just asked my guy. falling out of the I'm rafters like, like, to, to say hello to Steve I'm Burton. I'm like, Steve, do you ever get to just sit and watch the game? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, occasionally. He's got to, like, hide in one of the windows. Montero, corner three is good. It's back to a 19-point lead. Yeah, this is just too much. And the, uh, the rebounding, I mean, they've gotten third, fourth, fifth chances. That's why they're in the number one seed, and that's why they're 19 and one. Timeout call, there's 6.16 left, presumably in the boxers' season, but never say never. Greater things have happened. Now, did you happen to see the score of the East Bridgewater Madison Park girls game last night? I did not. You're sitting down. East Bridgewater, 93. <sighs> Madison Park, 7. Oh! That had to have been on ESPN. 93 to 7. That's I mean, you, that's rough. you really EB on top? Yeah, you really need to work Madison to throw Park. up. Park. In a You're Madison Park. shambles. Madison, the whole school. They came in at 11 and 9. I don't know who they played. But seven, I don't know if it was a misprint or a typo, but 93 to seven. And that really is, you, that's you, almost, if, if it is I think true. That's almost as impressive as Lincoln Sudbury's 77 point victory in football. And, and you really just need to run it up? I mean, you have to press, you have to run up and down the floor. I mean, it's insane to think of that number. So you got to give us the scoop first. What scoop? What are you going to work on with Steve Burton? We heard a little bit of the conversation behind us. What am I going to work Some cell phone numbers were exchanged. Yeah. Oh, he said, that, you know, anything he can do to help out. I mean, and I think it's important um, for our kids to hear the message about, you know, Steve's been around, the story of his dad. 
and uh, the training village and about personal sacrifice and making good choices. And they hear it from me, they hear it from their coaches, but to hear it from somebody that they see on television, it, it has a whole new meaning to it and it, it's more believable. And I think that that would be a, a great thing for him to come down if we can get parents and you know, to start off the, the season maybe in the fall, kick off the, the fall season with Steve coming down for, for that kind of um, message. I think it would really be good. The first half that Veronica Burton had, first thing Steve said, she has to play better. Yeah, I have to say, hey, solid, don't get me wrong. But uh, a lot of missed shots. Um, I bet you. She, I don't think she'll have more than 12 points tonight. I mean, incredible ball handler. I mean, as good. Incredible. I mean, as good as as good as anybody I've seen all year, and um, she could play on our boys' team. I think as a point guard. I really believe she's that solid, fundamentally solid. Control sees the floor, I mean, exceptionally well. Think about the possibilities, her and oh. Jarese on the floor at the same time. Call against the boxers, this will be Amari Turner at the line, the sophomore forward. 52 to 35, five minutes to go. A 17 point lead for the Lions. Turner good on her first attempt. Williams inside for a went high off glass. No yeah. good. Fernandez tipping the rebound and a jump ball called. I'm, I'm going to tell you, that's at least 16 points that they have missed right under the right under the hoop. And the difference is Tuesday night against Durfee, they hit every single one of them. Mm -hmm. In the first half alone, Jade Went had 12 points from underneath the basket, either off. Bounce passes where the vision in the pass was good or off of rebounds and without dribbling put right back up to the hoop. Not so much tonight. What a difference 48 hours makes. So we look forward to the boys game against Quincy. The presidents. Is weather getting into the players' heads a little bit? We may play Friday, we may play Saturday. I'll we tell don't you, really I'd, rather, know. I'd rather play Friday. There's no question about it. We do not. We may play. not have school. No, we don't play well on weekends, and we don't play well on As during, evidenced during, by during, no, during vacation. Newton North. No, during vacation and on weekends, we do not play well. Um, just the fact that it's such a change in the routine. And I, I mean, for our kids, they come in, they have breakfast, they go to their class, they have lunch, they go. I mean, it's this routine that they've gotten into, and then on the weekends. Saturday, you wake up late. Wake up late, may or may not have breakfast. Um, may show up, you know, an hour before the game on an, on an empty stomach. Oh, here we go, where's Palms away? There it is, Fernandez, oh. no good. Burton with the rebound. She's got to be dangerously close to a triple-double. Easily already there with points and rebounds. Williams blocked now by number 20, Shannon <coughs> Laughlin, the senior guard, seeing her first minutes tonight. Burton eventually down to the corner. Now it's Oliveri. Turner to Oliveri over to Burton uh, to Laughlin. Three is in and out. And the gasps from the crowd. But to watch them move the ball, it's it's fun. Backcourt that, violation. That ball call. doesn't touch the ground. <laughs> and it's quick and they move it and they 
They just do do the little things. Montron comes out in favor of Jayla Smith. For the boxers, it's another miss three. Burton offensive rebound. We've only got a couple of seniors on this team. Jusoma Montron, Jamari Johnson, and Annalicia Fernandez. Yep. And then we've got the little Williams coming up here next year, which should be good. Three, four, uh, very is good. A 23 point, a 22 point lead, excuse me, for the Lions with 3.15 to go. Yeah. See, in the paint, there's 18 points missed. Jayla Smith grabbing the rebound. So the setup for next year, you're gonna have junior Elizabeth Williams who now I think knows what to expect playing point guard mm -hmm. as opposed but to I the center she was oh, under. Oh, I think her assistant may come in as a freshman to be a point guard. I think Williams really does want to switch back to a center, pure forward oh, type role. God. You've got Lorenzo who oh. is dangerous at times beyond the arc. Mm -hmm. But can go completely cold and miss five or six <laughs> shots in a row. Yes. So if she works on, on that, she could be very, very dangerous. Yeah. You've got Tannis who got some extended playing time down the stretch. Yeah, I think they'll be fine. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I'm hoping that Chris comes back next year to coach the girls. That's kind of a wait and see. Went to Fernandez. Nobody wants to take oh. a shot. Jayla Smith, corner three, no good. Uncontested rebound for Shannon Laughlin. Oh, bombs away. Why not? You're up by 22 with two minutes to go in the south oh. sectional semis. Oh. Quick release low. It was a pass, we'll call it. Jayla Smith off to Fernandez. Yeah. Hot potato. Brockton has very clearly accepted defeat here. Jade went three, no good. Oh. Should have been out of play. He's not. Burton comes away with it. So we've got a very solid foundation. We're yeah. losing a starter and a very big mm -hmm. piece of the team in Annalisa Fernandez, but yep. you've got the likes of Jade Wint, yep. Elizabeth Williams, Annalie Lorenzo. As Jamari Johnson comes on to the floor with us and Jade Wint, Rockton's gonna put in two of its three seniors to finish out this one. I have to say, great job by Coach Conley. You know, coming in literally a week before the season started, running all three tryouts for JV, freshman, and varsity, making it into the tournament, winning their first game of the tournament. And honestly, we didn't know what to expect from this team. After last year and Alex Giannaris going off to Tabor Academy, we're, we're kind of like, all right, what, what are we going to do? And he just did a remarkable job, I mean, and he really brought the best out in all the girls and worked them hard and you, know, I, you never want to see your season come to an end but this was much much better than we had anticipated. First year coach winning a share of the big three division. Can't really complain with that especially no. when he found out he was the coach like you said about a week before the season started. Fernandez in for Johnson. Johnson to Lorenzo. Quick three, no good. There's a seven second difference between shot clock and game clock, so Newton South will have to put up a shot at some point. Or will they? Laughlin fouled by Lorenzo. 
and that resets the shot clock. There's 29.4 seconds on the game clock, so no shot clock is in effect. So Newton South kind of reminded me of the Brockton boys team a little bit. Brockton tonight was able to kind of hang in there for mm -hmm. the first half, yep. and then Newton South turned it on coming out of the locker room. Mm -hmm. And one would expect the boys team, as they have been for much of the year, will be the same way tomorrow night, possibly Saturday. I hope not Saturday. <laughs> that I makes two of us. Johnson, floater, no good. Fernandez, offensive board. Could be for the first time tonight. She had a tough An night. An offensive board. And a layup. Jayla Smith coming up with a steal. Padding the stats a little bit. Hits the layup with one second to right, go. We didn't lose by 20. Didn't lose by 20. That's the small victory here. We're going to talk to Coach Chris Connolly at some point. But it's 58 to 39, the final score. 19 point victory for the Newton South Lions who move on to play in the South sectional semifinals. Brockton's season, meanwhile, comes to an end here in Newton tonight. Your thoughts on really, I'd call it a very successful year for the Lady Boxers. Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, we didn't know what to expect. And uh, I'm just making sure everything's good over there. Yeah, they're good, good. All right, we got a nice job. And that's the thing, the girls play hard. They play hard every single game that I went to go see them. And uh, that's all you can ask for, play hard. You know, no issues with drama or any sportsmanship things. I mean, just a class act all the way around. And it starts with Chris, and uh, we're, I'm really happy. So 58 to 39, the final score. Let's go get head coach Chris Connolly's thoughts. And look at this. I mean, no, no, uh, no year, time wasted at all. The no baskets, time wasted. The baskets, baskets are up. up. Shot clock off. <laughs> so let's go talk to Coach Chris Connolly, get his thoughts on this game, his playoff run, and the season as a whole. Here with Coach Chris Connolly, a heartbreaking end to your season here in the South Sectional quarterfinal here at Newton South High School against the top seed. Talk about the performance of the boxers tonight. I, I think we, we really worked hard. There was um, you know, a time that at the beginning of the game where we just kept turning the ball over. That bad start really got to us, and that was, that was the difference in the game. You know, I think if we came out better, um, didn't have eight turnovers, or we finished with ten, but we had eight turnovers the first four minutes of the game, and all eight of those turnovers led to baskets, easy, uncontested baskets, and... That was, that was the difference. I mean, they can't take anything away from the effort. We battled. Um, you know, they're really good. Burton's, Burton is the real deal. Um, we, we wanted to play a physical basketball game, and we did, and it kind of, they stopped driving for a while, but unfortunately they, they hit their threes, and that was, uh, that was not what we wanted when we were doing that. So we had these swings in the first half. You guys clawed to within five twice in that first half. You ended up at the half down by 10. Talk about those swings and how you weren't able to stem the tide and really continue the climb back in. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's exhausting, you know, playing against a team like that. Usually we can use our energy and our speed, but, you know, they, they're, they're fast. Uh, they're as fast as us, if not faster. Um, they're about our size, they're strong. It was, um, you know, we just didn't have, we have a lot of young players and coming into an away game um, for the first time against the number one seed was, was something that I think a lot of them weren't fully prepared for. Um, but fortunately, they have a few more years left and they can get back into this. So on a positive note, always got a hit on those. Annalie Lorenzo and Jade Wint had very strong first halves. Lorenzo had 12 points in that first half. Wint had eight. Talk about their performances tonight. Yeah, they, we, they, they were making their shots. And Annalie, I saw her in the warm-up before. Um, I said to my assistant coach that she hasn't missed all warm-up. And we were hoping that she was going to have a game like that, and she did. And it was great. So... 
first year head coach hired a week before the season started you clinch a share of the big three title you get a win in your first ever playoff matchup talk about this season what it's meant to you as a as a person as a coach of the brockton lady boxers um, this is the most enjoyable season that i've ever had these girls are phenomenal they work so hard every single day in practice they're really nice they get along great this has been an enjoyable enjoyable season and um, it's sad that it's over i'm gonna miss i'm gonna miss these these kids especially anna lisi i've known her since she was in fifth grade and uh you know tonight's the last time i get to coach her and i coached her for years now anything you want to add um just that again i think brockton women's basketball is on the upswing we have a great group um they're committed to work in the off season they get along you know they're they're good they're solid solid program and um yeah, I, th I think we're on the upswing. Coach, congratulations on a great season. We'll see you next year. Thank you very much. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, a whole host of broadcast partners. We started off with Athletic Director Kevin Cairo. We moved on to greener pastures for the halftime in the third quarter. Steve Burton joining us. Finishing strong, we sent in the closer, Craig Kimbrell, Kevin Cairo. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next season.